This is part six of topic five on electric behavior and diffusion. Now let's return to our application of photovoltaic cells. As we mentioned earlier, a photovoltaic cell basically involves a junction between an n-type and a p-type semiconductor. And remember that an n-type semiconductor is doped with group five elements, so there's an excess electron, and the charge carriers are free electrons. And a p-type semiconductor is doped with a group three element, so that the charge carrier, there's a missing electron, and therefore the charge carrier are holes. When a P, NP or PN type uh, junction is struck by a photon, the energy excites the electrons and the holes into the valence band and causes a current to be transferred um, through the load and back into the solar cell. As we mentioned before, the reason for low thermal efficient or low electrical efficiency in solar cells is because a large portion of the spectrum of visible light is not captured by the solar cell itself. Either it's lost by transmission of the light, the low energy photons pass right through the solar cell, or the higher energy photons are transferred into heat and lost as heat loss. So the optimum cell that we've been able to produce so far captures only about 31 percent of the spectrum of light that comes from the Sun. And notice that the this uh, optimum cell is based on a cutoff voltage of around 1.1 electron volts for the band gap of silicon. We could try other semiconductors which have alternative band gaps. So for example copper indium selenide has a band gap of around 0.9 electron volts. Gallium arsenide has a band gap around 1.4. Cadmium telluride around 1.5. So we could use these different um, semiconductors to try to capture different portions of the visible spectrum. And this is actually being done today by using what are called multi-junction solar cells. So basically you take multiple semiconductors of different band gaps and stack them on top of one another. And as the light is transmitted through each layer of um, semiconductor, the layer beneath it picks up a small fraction of more of that spectrum. So for example, if I have one band gap, I only capture the red portion of the spectrum, where the black line represents the full spectrum. But if I have two band gaps, as represented by the blue line, I capture first a higher energy band gap portion of the spectrum, and then a lower energy band gap portion of the spectrum. And if I had three band gaps, I'd capture even slightly more of the full spectrum. So the idea here is that we can enhance efficiency by having multiple band gaps within the functional design of our uh, multi-junction solar cell. So here's an example of a multi-junction solar cell developed by the Department of Energy. As you can see, it has aluminum indium phosphide, gallium indium phosphide, gallium indium arsenic, aluminum gallium indium arsenic, uh, gallium arsenic, and yeah, and that's it as the base materials and you'll notice they are able to achieve efficiency as high as 41 percent which is pretty remarkable compared to most other solar cell technologies. There are also devices being developed at Stanford University where we're combining gallium indium phosphide with gallium arsenic and germanium and newer developed elect, um, low electron volt uh, spectra and we're capturing as much as 42 percent efficiency in these four band gap uh, multi-junction solar cells.